let's just take this time to get up off your seats and let's worship God this morning. For he is the only one that deserves all our praises.
Lord, move the mountains, make a way for us. We see you do it, do it again. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they fall. But you have never. Waiting for change to come, knowing the battles won. For you have never. Oh, 
Life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt. The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down, as if we could somehow will it to go away or we think we can go toe-to-toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable. But when they appear, we have a protector, a savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. The new year is here and there's no better way to approach it other than prayer. We started the 21 days of prayer and fasting on New Year's Day and we have 11 days more to do prayer covering for the rest of the year. We have had a year of health and economic crisis in 2020. Now, what is a crisis? A crisis is not all in a day's work problem. It's not a bump on the road, but a mountain that can't be removed by simple means. Having a shovel, removing a mountain. Crisis is a circumstance that is beyond your normal capacity, normal control, and cure. It could be a health crisis that won't get away, a financial crisis in dead ends, relational crisis, legal crisis, and job-related crisis. There are things that we cannot control, only manage them. But there are times that we cannot control and manage circumstances that we call it a crisis. Then we really need to know how to pray for a breakthrough in such crisis. Breakthrough is a word used for one who is underwater, struggling to get to the surface to get air. In such a case, you don't just wait and expect to get to the surface, but you muster all your strength to swim and break through the surface from the drowning experience. There are uncontrollable and unmanageable things in life that we need to entrust those to God in what we call breakthrough prayer. There are times that God allows circumstances in our lives that He reserves the only right and resource to meet them. 
In every problem, there is a God part and a man part. Most of God's part is in the area of the miraculous and can only be released by our part in breakthrough prayer. So I'd like us to look at what the Lord told us in Mark chapter 11, verse 24. He said this, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. When you thank God for answered prayers, it's being grateful. But when you thank God in advance for answering your prayers, that's faith. Now, for sure, we are going to meet challenges to our faith in 2021. But how can I know how to pray with breakthroughs in the upcoming year? Well, David, the greatest king of ancient Israel, gives us a hint on how he overcame his crisis in life in Psalm 121, verse 1 to 8. And let me read. And he said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The Lord bless the reading of his word. This Psalm of David is one of the songs of ascent. They are songs sung or chanted by those who are going up their way to the temple mount into the presence of the Lord. The temple is the symbol of God's presence and they come to the presence of the Lord on a hill in Jerusalem called Mount Zion to worship. And on their way up, they are approaching God in prayer. In the same way, how can we pray breakthrough prayers? This is what you do when you pray. Number one, focus on God first. It all starts with your vision of God in your life. David said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, not the hills. And what do I mean by that? When David wrote this psalm, David remembers his crisis when he was running for his life, when his father-in-law, King Saul, was chasing him because of jealousy. So David hid himself with his tiny army in the hills of En Gedi. It was a strategic location for a small army to be able to ward off a vast army because of its narrow passages. David did not attribute his safety through the strategy of that location, but the sovereignty of God in his life. He said, my help comes from the Lord, not on his strategic location. Now, how do you focus on God in prayer? First and foremost, look at His greatness. Look at the size of your God before the size of your problems. He said, my help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. What could be greater than maker of heaven and earth? When you're praying for something you cannot control, you don't focus on the problem. You focus on God's greatness. Don't you know that when you focus on things, size is relative to proximity. Whatever is closest to you will always look bigger, no matter how small. The question is how close or how far you are from God will determine the intensity and gravity of how your problems will look like. When I was a new Christian, I read a verse that says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. And I said to myself, oh wow, he's such a huge God. But it really means contrast in power and authority that the earth is nothing compared to heaven. Now, if you focus on the greatness of God, there is nothing and no one greater than our God. Nothing is too difficult for God 
and nothing is impossible for God. So the next thing when you focus on God in prayer, look at his power. He said, my help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. David has not even seen the vastness of the universe or even the size of the earth. There was no Google Earth at that time and no telescopes to see the galaxies in the sky. And yet he appreciated the power of God so much that God can keep the order of the universe. God is all powerful and nothing is impossible and nothing is too hard for him. Another way to focus on God in prayer is to remind yourself of his promises. Look at his promises. This psalm is full of promises, Psalm 121. When you take note from verse 3, it says there, He will not let your foot be moved. He will keep you in the shade. He will keep you from evil. He will keep your life. He will keep your going in and going out. This song of ascent is that worshipers recite God's promises from the scriptures. They declare the promises of God as they approach the temple. In the same way, it is best to know the promises of God and declare it over and over and over in our lives, in the lives of our children, over this year, and over our circumstances. That's why they chant as they approach the temple of God, that who dwells in the holy place. So in the same way, we should meditate and sing and declare and say the promises of God. So I do this every time when I pray for people. When I pray for people, I declare the goodness of God, the power of God, and the promises of God. You just don't say, Lord, heal the person. Lord, bless the person. What we must declare who God is. I invoke his name that he is the provider, he's the healer, he's the protector, he's the shield, he's the buckler. And all of those names that God revealed to the scripture, I declare in prayer, and so should we. I do this every time when I pray for people's needs. Why? Because in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it also says there, we must continue to hold firmly to our declaration of faith. The one who made the promise is faithful. God is faithful to his promises. The next thing we do is to look at his faithfulness because God is faithful to his promise. In Psalm 121, going back to the text, it says, the keeper of Israel does not slumber nor sleep. That means he is faithful. The word keep and keeper here is mentioned six times. Therefore, you can see the faithfulness of God. There is an emphasis of his faithfulness here. When you approach God in prayer, it is not to flatter him about himself or remind him of who he is, but it's to remind ourselves of who God is till it sinks in to our spirit. It is not just to repeat and repeat a mantra thinking our long prayers forces the hand of God to move. Now, reciting who God is, is more of our realization of God's faithfulness to his promises. The second thing about making a breakthrough prayer, aside from focusing on God, as I said before, it is all about your vision of who God is, is to depend on him entirely. Verse five says, the Lord is your shade on your right hand. Shade here means protection. Right hand means strength. His protection will be your strength. And the verse after it says, the Lord will keep you from the sun by day and the moon by night. It means God keeps you both day and night. You have to tell God in your prayers that there are days and nights you can't manage and control. You have to tell God that you are powerless and you've tried many times to alleviate your pain, your habits, and your hang-ups, that you can't manage and control things, what you're going through. Probably you have a family member or a loved one who is dying. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing you can do about that. 
You have people in your life whose choices you have no control that adversely would affect you. That, if anything is going to be done, it has to be done by somebody greater than you. Simply having faith in God. Sometimes faith means doing nothing till God shows up and shows off. Sometimes God allows us on the end of our rope till we will learn how to cope. You want to know why you're tired all the time? Why you're frustrated? Why you're fatigued? Why you're worn out by life? The reason that you're so tired is you're trying to fight battles that belongs to God. And you're not God. You've been batting your head trying to solve this problem in your marriage, trying to solve this problem in your body, in the economy, in the world, in the nation. And you're trying to solve it on your own power. You're trying to fight the battle on your own and you're getting tired. Relief to your problems is at hand, but it depends on whom you depend on. There's a saying, let go and let God. When God is not in the picture, there are three ways we deal with our crisis. Three things we normally do when we are in a crisis. First, we blame others for it, accuse others and excuse ourselves. The second is the other extreme. We beat ourselves beyond recovery. We speak negatively to ourselves instead of declaring the, the promises and the goodness of God. Well, it's okay if you are taking responsibility in terms of being repentant. And the next thing is that we break away from crisis to find many forms of temporary relief. My friends, if you drown your sorrows with a bottle, let me tell you that sorrows know how to swim. The euphoria, the euphoria and ease by substance and alcohol abuse is a cure worse than the problem. It's the flight before the splat. God never intends us to run away from a crisis. It is there we will find out where our strength ends and God's power begins. The Apostle Paul knew that there is strength in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 19, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Depend on God entirely. Let Him show up, but let Him show you the way. In verse 8, The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. In verse 8, and also in Psalm 37, verse 23, it says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So therefore, follow his lead. There comes a time that we have to listen to what God has to say and read and know the scriptures. Prayer is not a monologue, but a dialogue. He will remind you of a verse or stories in the Bible relevant to your situations. He gives order to your life through his words. The steps and stops of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And the last verse here he says, He will keep your going out and your coming in from this time and forever. Then he has a specific route for you to be in the hollow and safety of his hands. This is always found in the wisdom of his words in the Bible. His promise for you is today and forever as your keeper. And let me recite the verse once again in your crisis in Psalm 121 says, I look with my eyes on the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. This is what David said. But let me show you another promise from the words of God when God promised the children of Israel crossing the wilderness to enter the promised land in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 11. But the land that you are going over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water by the rain from heaven, a land that the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are always upon it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. If I am to change the word land into the word year, it looks this way. But the year you are crossing to take possession is a year of mountains and valleys. 
that drinks rain from heaven, meaning dependent on God. It is a year the, the Lord your God cares for. The eyes of the Lord your God are continually on it from beginning to its end. 2021 will not be without hills and valleys, but it's where God is. He cares for your future and He has His eyes on it from the beginning of the year to the end. We can pray breakthrough prayers because we can focus on the one who is great, powerful, faithful to His promises. We can trust the one who can give us the strength when our strength fails for us to go on. We can have one who can lead us where His miracles reside, as long as we abide in Him and His words. We can have breakthrough prayers and the crisis that we will face or we are, might be facing now will just dissipate and disappear because of the power, greatness, and the presence of our God. Let this be by faith for 2021. We will thank God for the things that we pray for that He will answer. Now let's pray. Now say this prayer with me in your heart also. Lord, help me to start my prayers focusing on you, not my problems. Help me to remember your greatness and your power and help me to remember your promise. God, there's nothing too hard for you. I'm asking you for a breakthrough in some areas of my life. I can't change this thing on my own. Help me overcome my battles by depending in your strength and power. Sometimes I don't even know what to do. Lord, help me to listen to what you say in your words. And as I ascribe to your word in daily devotions, direct me and guide me. Thank you for controlling my life as I submit my life and future in your hands. I declare and decree that 2021 will be a greater year than last year. That if I survive the crisis in 2020, I will survive this crisis and whatever I may face in 2021. Because Lord, you promise in your word that your eyes will always be with us, that you are our keeper. You said in your word, the keeper of Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. We thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and see you again next time. Good morning, Cross Culture Church. Good morning, and thank you for joining our online worship service. And thank you for continuing to support our ministry. We have three ways we can keep doing that. Number one, you can go online to the crossculturechurch.org and click the word give. Two, you can text the word give to 424 292 2600. And third, you can mail a check to 9659 Balboa Boulevard in Northridge, California, zip code 91325. And we want to thank you again for all your prayers and your financial support. All you're giving is a tax deduction. God has been faithful in helping us through the years, and we are very excited for what God has in store for us in the new year. Together with the Foursquare Churches, we will embark in a 21-day prayer and fasting from January 1st to the 21st. It is best that we enter this new year while praying on our knees with humility. And don't forget to let your small group leader know which days of the week that you'd like to pray. And just to encourage you, we have a quote from John Wesley. God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. Also, on January 15th, our small groups meeting will embark on a new sermon series called Anxious for Nothing a curriculum from a well-noted and familiar author, Max Lucado. We are confident of the future in God. It's been said, never be afraid of, to trust an unknown future to a known God. So we will welcome the new year anxious for nothing. Lastly, we hope your kids will join our Kids Connect ministry every Sunday on Zoom at 930. Just look out for the Cross Culture Church email. Remember, you are loved and prayed for. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you guys soon. God bless.